Okay, everyone, I think we'll get started and kicked off. Uh, hello to everybody uh, in attendance. My name is Scott Harrison. I am the Grey Matters Cybersecurity Solutions Specialist. Uh, and today we're going to be presenting a webinar about managed detection services and an insight into what it would potentially take in order to get a cybersecurity operations center running at your business and the complications around that. Um, there is a Q&A box on the side, so please feel free to use that during the session and we will do our very best to answer those questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, and if there's anything we need to take offline, we are certainly available to email or contact uh, for any further questions or detail that you might need. Firstly, uh, what's on today's webinar? Um, so as I said, if you need to ask a question, the Q&A feature is on the right side. Can you view the presentation after this session now? The answer is yes, it is being recorded and all the slides are going to be available via the link that you use to join today's session. And any additional support post webinars such as demos, free trials, licensing advice, free cybersecurity assessments, blogs and other content and any other webinars to view and attend are all available on our website and will be made available by our fantastic marketing team. So on the agenda, uh, we're going to talk a little about, about Grey Matter, uh, what is a security operations center or SOC, the different stages of an SOC, the SOC challenges, our managed detection services that we can offer via our various partners and vendors, and any Q&A and how Grey Matter can further support you in cybersecurity. So a little bit about Grey Matter. We were launched in 1983. We are very much a software reseller and a cloud service provider focused on supporting developers and technology-led companies. We were acquired by Global Cl Client Global Solutions in 2020, which now gives us a global presence across the UK, Canada, Ireland, and the USA. We have a vast catalog of solutions uh, from leading and very niche vendors and our specialist areas counter cybersecurity, ISV, Microsoft Embarcadero and mapping specialist teams. So today we're going to talk about SOC, but not this kind of SOC, I'm afraid. We're going to be talking about a security operations center, not the kind that you wear on your feet. And what is a security operations center? The first thing we can say is it's a centralized function in an organization that employs people uh, that might have processes and technology and it's there to continuously monitor and improve an organization's security posture, but also preventing, detecting, analyzing, and responding to cybersecurity incidents. And incidentally, if we think about the threat landscape at the moment, I'm just gonna share something that's fairly interesting and gives us a bit of an insight into the amount of traffic that is now coming through in terms of cybersecurity threats. And this is uh, maintained by the firewall vendor uh, Checkpoint, and this is their Threat Cloud AI platform. And as you can see from the left there, the attacks that are coming through um, and the type that they are, are located at the bottom in terms of whether it was a malware, a phishing attempt, or an exploit. And you can see them flying around the world. And as per the top of the screen, there's already been 48 million different attacks detected today or different types of threats. So it's staying ahead, which is certainly the important bit that a SOC is in place to do. It's to stay ahead of those threats and what's going on. So I'm stop sharing my tab now. So there are three different stages of a SOC. Uh, the first is prevention and detection. The second is an investigation. And then the third is response. Looking at those in more detail with prevention and detection, rather than responding to threats as they happen, and the SOC works to monitor the network around the clock 24-7. And in doing so, the SOC team can detect any malicious activities and prevent them before they can cause any damage to the business or cause any breaches. The second stage investigation, uh, the analyst will analyze any activity that's suspicious, 
determine the nature of the threat and the extent to which it's penetrated the infrastructure. In addition to that, the analyst views the organization's network and the operations from the perspective of the attacker or an attacker looking for key indicators and areas of exposure before they get exploited. And then the final is the response stage. So after investigation, uh, the SOC team coordinates the response in order to remediate and fix the issue. And as soon as the incident is confirmed, the SOC acts as first responder, emergency room triage, uh, performing actions that will isolate endpoints, terminate harmful processes, stop them from executing, deleting files, deploying ransomware or anything that's going to be harmful to the business. There are challenges around an SOC, and the first is the shortage of cybersecurity skills that are not just in the UK, which I know where most are joining from today, but around the world. Um, the surveys found that around 53% of SOCs are just having trouble hiring the people with the necessary skills. What that ultimately means is that they're understaffed. They lack the skills to identify and respond to the threats in a timely and effective manner. So again, trying to stay ahead of those security threats. And if you've not got the people, you've not got the skills, you're not going to stay ahead. There are, as you've seen from that cyber threat map, too many threat alerts. And as organizations get more tools for threat detection, the more security alerts that you're going to get in is continuous. Security teams are already undated with work. Overwhelming number of threats can cause something called threat fatigue, where you're getting lots of doubles or repeat offenders or repeat bits of or repeat alerts coming through. Um, and many of the alerts, they don't provide enough intelligence or context to actually investigate the threat and check again if they are false positives. And they drain time and resources. Um, but they can also distract teams from real incidents that, are, again, might be more harmful to the business in terms of ransomware or bad actors or whatever the threat might be. Finally, operational overhead. Uh, loads of organizations use lots of different tools. And in an ideal world, we'd love to say there's one vendor that will do everything. And unfortunately, that is not the case means that the security personnel and the team, they need to translate security alerts and policies between different environments. And that can be costly, complex, and again, it leads to efficiency. Again, thinking about that time and getting there before the threat can be of harm to the business. Final challenge is around the cost to implement. So to give you some figures now, or around different levels of SOC and figures what it would take to get there. The first would be an entry level SOC. So this would include some, but not all elements of a standard SOC. At this level, you're likely to have a range of different services and people that have been added to solve problems, but they're not yet unified under a holistic SOC strategy and process, i.e. you're being reactive only. You don't have a plan if something goes wrong. Your detection capabilities are present, but threat hunting, prevention, investigation, remediation will be lacking, and you're unlikely to have a 24-7 coverage because of that. Level's better than nothing, but at the same time, it does feel like you're constantly chasing your tail and falling behind. The second level would be a standard SOC. This includes a strategy for detecting, preventing, and investigation, and as a result, it means you've got an appropriately assigned security staff, along with automation to help augment the team's capability and take care of the minute stuff that's not going to take up too much time of your day. And at this level, you feel like your head is just above water, but you never feel too confident. Again, you're still slightly behind. Finally, the best in class SOC. This means that you've got dedicated experts working in a 24 seven manner to detect and prevent threats across the network. And in addition, you've got people proactively hunting down threats and plugging holes before they become issues. And that could be extended out not to just uh, cybersecurity threats such as viruses or malware, but also patching and vulnerability management and also monitoring anything internal in terms of risk. Advanced automation scales the SOC across the enterprise to ensure you're able to respond to incidents as quickly and as effectively as possible. And at this level, 
you're ahead of the game. You're top of the field and you're doing everything you can to make sure your business is under protection. However, there are some bits that need to be put in so you have this best in class as the label, if you like. And the first is infrastructure. It's not just your security experts, but you need the right security tools to maximize capabilities, which means significant software and hardware infrastructure investments need to be made to give you an optimal security posture. And as each tool is added, you're going to need time to implement that. You're going to need time to learn the software, learn its foibles, learn its ins and outs. And it's time that's not spent looking for current threats. Again, not staying ahead. Second is time. If you don't already have an SOC in place, it could be that every second you delay is the second that you're at risk. However, setting up an internal stock, it can take months or even years to hire the staff, buy the security hardware and software, and implement it throughout the enterprise. And depending where you are in your SOC journey, you may have to spend more than you would otherwise to quickly cover up those gaps. And the SOC challenges is, yes, the cost to implement. The average salary as a survey last year for security analysts is around 70K a year. Not a small cost at all. And a fully staffed team could end up costing you over 1 million a year. And the infrastructure costs are also spreading out to almost 1 million a year as well. This is a significant investment. And what we can say is that not every business is going to be able to stump up this much money. But it doesn't mean that you can't have an SOC. And incidentally, this is where we can introduce some of our vendors that can make this possible at a absolute fraction of the cost that you've seen there if you were going to try and do it on your own. The first vendor we're going to talk about is ESET um, and their managed detection and response product. A little bit of background around ESET. They've been going since the early 80s and you might already use them for your security. You don't even know it. So if any of you out there use the Chrome browser, it is their antivirus that is built into there. So it means worldwide protecting everybody who uses that internet browsing product. They have some very strong company values. Um, they are still independently owned by the same owners that started the company over in Slovakia. They were one of the first companies to uh, effectively stop selling in Russia when the war started and have donated, I believe, over 2 million uh, euros to the various charities in the Ukraine that are uh, helping people who were in that really, really awful uh, war that's happening out there. But their security services and their managed detection product is very wide ranging and they deliver a complete security solution that will prevent, react and be proactive if you need it to be. And it's there to reinforce your security team with local support. They are based in Bournemouth in the UK and the experts are there to help if any serious security issues arises. If you look at that in more detail and the kind of activities that they get up to down the middle, Anything to do with malware um, in terms of detection, getting rid of a ransomware infection, looking at false positives and stopping them happening again. They do full incident and investigation response from uh, uh, basic file analysis right to digital forensics and an incident response plan. They also offer security support, support around adding rules and exclusions optimization of your agents and network monitoring, including uh, threat hunting on demand and threat monitoring. It's important to note that there are two different styles of this that they offer. So the detection response advanced, which is in the column on the in the middle there, uh, the threat uh, uh, detection and hunting, what it's doing is relying on you, the customer, using their EDR platform and sending alerts to them that are critical in order for them to investigate and then advise you on the changes to policies or anything else that you might need to action in order to stop this threat and prevent it happening again. And they will constantly do that on a 360 cycle as long as you're reporting it. The difference between that and the ultimate is when you agree to the ultimate, they actually do that for you. 
So they don't rely on you to report. They go and proactively hunt for threats. They go and look for gaps in your network, repeat offenders, false positives that might keep coming up if you've got developers playing around with various different bits of software. Not only that, but they will give you deployment and upgrade services in the ultimate service. So if you're using someone else, for instance, right now for your security, they will come and get this installed and continue to give you deployment assistance and upgrading your endpoints and agents as well and maintaining the network. What this is going to give you is that ahead of time bonus to keep you ahead of those cybersecurity threats. But it's not the only one that we offer. The second that I'm going to talk about is the Sophos managed detection response. Now, Sophos has been a Gartner leader for, I think, many years now in 12 different categories. And their ecosystem, they talk about something called a central heartbeat. And it is every product that they do works together and synchronizes in order to it's all about keeping you ahead of course and keeping track of threats that are coming through. Their and the R service is much like the ESET service, it's human led, 24 seven. There to neutralize threats before they can disrupt your business. It's customizable with different service tiers, uses their proprietary technology, or indifference to the ESET can use your existing cybersecurity solutions in order to offer the 24 seven service. So what does that look like in terms of offering? Well, they have a minimum offering, which is called Threat Advisor. It will offer 24 seven expert led threat response. It's still compatible with non software security products. They give you weekly and monthly reporting and then a monthly intelligence briefing as well from their threat team that's based in Oxford in Abingdon. Now, this is something that you could quite easily add on to a cybersecurity solution that you're already using and get yourself a much better picture or a more up-to-date picture of what's going on on your network. Extending this out to the MDR version, you bring in their account health check. You get the expert-led threat hunting, which is proactive. Threat containment, if you do get compromised by any malware and you have a direct call in and support during any incidents that happen. So they will be on hand, on the phone, on teams, ready and willing to help you solve any issues that you're gonna have. Extending that out into the complete offering, you get a full scale incident response, but you need their XDR product in order to fulfill that need. You get something called a root cause analysis, i.e. go right back, where did that come from? How did it happen? How can we stop it happening in the future? You have a dedicated incident response lead rather than a team. And I think this is quite telling of how confident that Sophos are about their managed offering. They offer a breach protection warranty of $1 million. So if you were to get ransomware while you're using their managed detection service, they're going to pay you a million dollars or up to. I'm not quite sure how that works. You might need to ask them if you ever take up the service. But for them to put that price tag on there, I think they're very confident about what their team can do and how they can help you proactively stay ahead of any cybersecurity incidents. This is the interesting part of Sophos because in the real world, you think these guys are competing against each other. So why on earth would someone want to start working with their competitors in order to office, offer a managed service? Simple fact is it goes back to that piece earlier on about why a SOC won't work. It's because people have got too many things that might be working against each other. And as you'll see from the middle, they will work with Microsoft, CrowdStrike, Palo Alto, Fortinet, Checkpoint, Rapid7, AWS, Google, Okta, Dark Trice and many other existing solutions and just plug themselves in and start providing you with a 24 seven threat service or managed detection service. Bigger picture of everything that it can do and a bit more about the Sophos ecosystem. So all the Sophos products on the left, the XDR, their firewall, their endpoint email and cloud products are all part of the managed detection service if you use those products. They offer up to a 90 day data retention, which is very good for anybody in say financial organizations who need to keep things for PCI, DSS compliance or other reasons. 
it integrates with the Microsoft Graph Security API. So if you're using things like Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Cloud, any of the Azure apps, identity protection in Azure AD, or Microsoft's Azure Sentinel Scene tool, it will work very well with that. It will work with the Office 365 Management and Activity Center, giving you information on what users have been doing, policy actions, uh, and events from the Office 365 Azure Active Directory logs. And then finally, integration with third-party endpoint protection. And there are some big names in there that, as you say, compete, compete with Sophos, definitely. CrowdStrike and Sentinel-1 and Trend Micro, Trellix also known as McAfee, uh, and Malwarebytes and BlackBerry, Silence, and Symantec and Broadcom. So regardless of who you might have, you don't have to fully invest in a Sophos product in order to get a security operations center running at your business. Um, so yeah, it, in conclusion, Sophos will integrate with many others to make an SOC possible. Now I do like things in freeze and the final offering from uh, a very, very, I'd say new player in the security world. They have been around about eight or nine years, but they're not very well known. Um, there is an interesting story behind Heimdall. They were uh, founded by two ethical hackers that used to go to hacking tournaments such as DEF CON and go and create very clever solutions in order to help find solve security problems that they've been tasked with. Um, they did get noticed by the FBI, so they went and did some work with them over in the States and figured, well, do you know what? If people are interested in what we're doing, then we might as well make a business of it. And again, we're looking at something of a different offering with their product, which is called an XDR SOC. Now, where this differs for me is it's doing what all the others are in terms of security and antivirus and doing the bit around threat prevention. But their unique security stack, they're eliminating the need for time consuming and error prone implementations because of everything that's included. So as you'll see from the left hand column, we've got the bits that are important to preventing any threats, which are next gen antivirus and ransomware and encryption prevention. They're also adding into this privileged access management. This is managing user permissions and preventing insider threat and strengthening your endpoints. You're now more at risk of someone internally in your business trying to compromise security and doing something they shouldn't do than you are of someone externally. Um, and getting even more so than say phishing links, I think in terms of threat vectors. The fourth, item on the list is vulnerability management. So that is around automated patch and asset management. And we'll cover both Microsoft third party and proprietary with a full audit trail. So again, closing that gaps and reducing false positives. They give you application control, which stops users installing stuff they shouldn't do is a simple way of putting this offering a deep analysis uh, with hunting and identification with impact reports if people have been installing things they shouldn't do and then finally dns filtering that's network monitoring of dns http and https traffic isolating and removing malware and giving you next step recommendations all of those are still offered 24 7 as are the previous two but the reason I added this in is because it's a little bit more comprehensive across the board for cybersecurity. There's two things on here that are very much part of uh, Cyber Essentials Plus, or even if you were going for something like NIST, or you were looking to get cyber insurance. Privilege access management and MFA, password management, vulnerability management and application control are all requirements on those different certifications. So the fact that someone is going to manage all of this for you and come and ask, you know, we found this, do you need to do something about it? Uh, or we found this, we really need to do something about it is a lot more, as I say, wide ranging and a lot more comprehensive across the board. That is everything I have to present today. Um, so again, how we can support you. Uh, we have myself and my colleague, James McKenney who can offer demos, free trials, licensing advice, assessments, and offer all of the great content that marketing have around cybersecurity, uh, available for consults in order to help you strengthen your security posture. We are definitely here to be a solution provider. We're not going to come and tell you 
and try and replace all the things that you have, especially if they're working. We're here to help plug those gaps and help you get those things that you are worried about solved. Thank you to everybody for taking out uh, half an hour of your day to come and watch me present about our managed security offerings. Um, as I say, all of the details are there on the slide if you need to get in contact with us. I wish you all a happy Wednesday and also have a great bank holiday this weekend. I shall hopefully speak to you many of you soon.